Today we're speaking with Steve Bartholomew of Square Foot Gardening. Why don't we start with a little bit of the background, the history about your organization and how you all got started. Square Foot Gardening started in the late 70s when my dad realized that the home gardeners uh, ended up halfway through the garden season discouraged weeds everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, produce lying on the ground, and he knew as an engineer there was a better way to do that. So he devised this method over the several years of square foot gardening where plants were basically allocated to certain sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large. So why not plant in a grid pattern and have plants in an area that was conducive to their size? So you'd have one tomato, 16 radishes, you're automatically rotating your crops around that way. And he developed this method. He wrote a book about it in the early 80s. Okay. And then we did the PBS show for two and a half years in the early 80s that ran nationally around the, around the nation. The row concept was something that just people thought that, well, that's how you garden. Yeah. Well, he, he had been told that's the way we've always done it. Right. And it's a um, hand-me-down from farming. And backyard gardening uh, should not be anything like that. When you think about it, you, you plant in long, long rows. You till up all that soil. It's a lot of work. You plant right. uh, hundreds and hundreds of seeds and then you have to thin them down again. You're walking on your growing soil. He saw right away that there has to be a better way and uh, square foot gardening became that. But then you think about also uh, all the uh, different things that you're wasting in terms of water, right. your time and energy. The water that you're using is concentrated just on that plant uh, right. in that one little area. Never overhead sprinklers. Uh, that brings on uh, diseases and mm -hmm. things like that. You're trying to also address a larger topic, not just gardening. You don't want to turn people off of gardening because you really want to uh, tackle world hunger, is that correct? Uh, the foundation was started to do just that, uh, to help uh, with world hunger, and we're having great success in, in many parts of the world. We have thousands and thousands of square foot gardens being built in Guatemala. Wow. Whole villages are getting uh, their produce. They're changing how they eat nutritionally. In Africa, we're having a lot of uh, success there as well, uh, where people are changing their nutritional values. I know that in, you know, in my world, uh, but I think also in gardening, what we found out with doing some natural playground designs is that plant blindness is a big issue. There's a lot of children out there that can't tell you the difference between a cucumber and a zucchini. That's a great point. We have a, a group we're working with, uh, the YMCAs, and we're hoping that we can roll it out nationally, but right now we're in New Jersey with uh, summer camp programs. Now, a lot of these inner city, the urban kids, some of them have no idea what a tomato is. So when they're growing their own tomatoes and they're seeing vegetables for the first time in that type of state, uh, they get excited about it. Uh, we've got some wonderful programs there. It, 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 uh, it concludes every summer with what they call the Great Zucchini Race, uh -huh. where they take vegetables that they've grown, they create race cars out of them, and we race, <laughs> them, race them down a hill, and it's a lot of fun. The kids love it. Wow. Uh, so you've got these, these zucchinis that are dressed <laughs> up with uh, different wheels that they make uh, out of the vegetables that they grow. And it's just a great thing for them to learn. Let's jump into the method of square foot gardening. Why are they so good for small spaces, for urban gardeners? For Central Texas, where you have uh, uh, water issues, where it gets so hot and dry, uh, square foot gardening is perfect because of the growing soil that we use, the medium. Uh, what we recommend is a three-part system, uh, one-third vermiculite, coarse grade, one-third uh, peat moss, and one-third uh, compost. That growing medium is very uh, important in square foot gardening uh, because once you've planted your bed, your raised bed, uh, you never walk on your growing soil. That, that medium that you grow will last at least a good seven years and we recommend when you replant that square, you put in a trowel full of compost. That's the only thing you would add. No fertilizers. Totally okay. organic. Wow. Let's talk about the size of the, the square foot garden. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. is it a, you're, you're saying it's just a square foot or? No, no, no. <laughs> Since you never walk on your growing soil, you want to be able to reach in from right. all angles. Right. So your square foot garden basically is never wider than four feet. Okay. Everyone can reach in two feet. Okay. And you have a, a nice area around it that you can walk uh, so you can get into and tend to your garden that way. Right. Uh, so if you think in terms of uh, no wider than four feet, a four foot by four foot is your basic garden. Okay. Uh, you can do a two foot by eight foot as long as you can get around it. Uh, we can grow uh, uh, vertical crops. It's very big. You'll grow vertical crops on the north side. 
so that size, uh, four, four by four, three by three works great for the kids. A little bit smaller arms. We have an elevated bed that's three foot by three foot. Uh, that's good for wheelchair access. They go really well with the elderly that don't want to have to bend over. Sure. Uh, and they're very comfortable to garden that way. So the, the initial construct though is the raised bed isn't really all that high. You're maybe just doing a board's width but then now you've got this newer one that's a bit higher for ADA accessibility and... It's, it's, it's elevated for that. Uh, the basic square foot garden that we find works well is only six inches deep. Okay. We're growing tomatoes that are eight, nine feet high and it's only six inches of soil. Uh, they grow out, don't necessarily grow down. Uh, I understand that uh, in areas, specifically central Texas, where you have tremendous heat, uh, maybe uh, six inches is not enough. Right. I would go eight inches or even 12 inches. And you could always put a, a couple inches of sand in the bottom and then put your growing medium, the metals mix on top of that. Okay, so if you've got, I mean, that's not a lot of soil. So if you've got poor soils, if you're somebody saying, oh golly, I can't grow anything on, I've got the worst soils in the world. That's no. not a problem? Not a problem at all. As long as you follow, follow the 30, 30, 30% rule, uh, you <clears> mix it. Uh, the vermiculite is uh, wonderful for retaining water. Uh, if you can't get uh, peat moss, um, it is a non-renewable resource, so right. a, a lot of success is being had with uh, coconut coir, okay. things like that. There's a sweet peat out there that's uh, being used. Uh, compost, just 100% compost, if you can't get those other ingredients, is being used in different areas of the world and doing very well. And then a very important component as well as the actual grid, right? The, the one by yeah. one, yeah. there's your square foot, right? There's your square foot. The grid is important. Uh, you visualize your growing area. It's easy to, uh, to see. You can plan it out better that way. You know you're gonna get 16 radishes in, or carrots in that one uh, square. You know you can plant a, a pepper next to it. You add some flowers to it. It's a, it, it's a true square foot garden and you can really see it come to, come to fruition that way. And then I was reading as well in just one four by four, you can, in two months you can produce 32 carrots, 12 bunches of lettuce, 18 bunches of spinach, 16 radishes, 16 scallions, nine Japanese turnips, five pounds of peas, four heads of romaine lettuce, one head of cauliflower, and one broccoli. In an ideal situation, yes, it, it works out really well that way. That is it, absolutely amazing. amazing. We love ours. It's right outside the kitchen door. You go outside, you clip some herbs for, for uh, to add to your meal at dinner. In the morning, you're out there, you tend it for a few minutes. There's hardly any weeds. Uh, if you see one, you just pick them up with your finger and take them right out. Uh, it's easy. The soil's friable. You can harvest, you, you have an eye on it. It's not way the heck out in the backyard. It's right near where there's uh, good sunlight. Uh, preferably eight hours a day if you sure. have it. Uh, it's much easier to, to put a small four by four square where there is sunlight than to try to have to till up everything. You don't need to till up your soil at all. You just put your four by four down, maybe a weed cloth underneath it, and you put your growing mix inside of that. And the weed cloth is important because you want to make sure that if you're putting it down in somewhere where you might mm -hmm. have a lot of stuff growing there, yeah you're not gonna start with a bunch of weeds as well. You never, you don't have to worry about what's underneath there, except for the fact that you don't want it to grow up. So we, weed cloth helps in that area. Okay, and then again, you had mentioned there's a lot of STEM projects that have, mm. that have grown out of this as well, right? Because we've talked about plant blindness, we've talked about some other things, but you know, kids can learn about the plant life cycle, botany, mm -hmm. uh, nutrition, science. Yeah, we have a lot of schools that are interested in it and we're revising our school curriculum as we speak. The success of your program here really speaks is that it, it, it can be a, a garden really for the, the novice mm -hmm. to the advanced. Anyone could square foot garden and they can do it successfully. I want to thank you so much for coming on today, Steve. This has been a, quite an enlightening discussion, very important topic, and I, I, I love the fact that it's just such an accessible uh, approach to gardening. It really takes a lot of that fuss and muss and that that lore, so to speak, that maybe prevent people from getting their hands dirty. Thanks for having us. Uh, we enjoy being here. And if you want to know anything else about Square Foot Gardening or the Square Foot Gardening Foundation, visit us at squarefootgardening.org. Okay, that's great. Uh, and now Daphne's up next.